Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Plan the Day Pro Planning Tips. My name is Christina, and I'm the co-founder and president of PlanTheDay.com. And I am so pumped to introduce all of you to Angela Prophet, celebrity wedding planner and great friend of mine. So thanks so much for coming on, Angela, and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you on the show, and you look fabulous as always. You do too. <laughs> thanks. So go ahead and just share with the brides who are tuning in a little bit more about yourself, your business, and maybe something fun about yourself too. Yeah. So my name is Angela Prophet. I've been a wedding planner going on 15 years now, and time flies when you're having fun. Oh my gosh, that's a long time. Congrats. Right? But um, planning weddings is my heart and my passion, and I've been, been loving it. But over the past few years, I've also grown into a productivity coach. And I coach other planners and teach other businesses how to go paperless and inspire other brides on how to plan their weddings paperless and how to back up all their documents and keep them safe. Um, something fun about me. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Like, I love my job. <laughs> like, it well, is you travel a lot. Where have you I, been recently? I do. I travel a ton. Um, I've been to De Bangkok and Dubai recently. I love to surf. People think that that's a little bit weird. So wow, that's awesome. Fun. <laughs> that's so fun. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited for you to come on the show and just provide some great tips to our brides about, you know, what to expect from their wedding planner. And yeah. also, you know, price versus value, because there are different pricing tiers um for planners and just understanding what you're getting out of each pricing tier because i get asked a lot from our clients and just good friends of mine about hey you know this is what i'm getting charged like what what are your thoughts on that like is that normal is that little is that a lot so i think what you're going to provide us is going to be amazing so yay and if anybody has any questions feel free to stop me and ask questions or ask your questions at the end I'm going to talk really fast. Yes. <laughs> my, my top 10 to 9, 10 tips, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's try and get through them then. All right. If you're people asking questions, I'll just try and stop you so we okay. can go awesome. from there. Uh, well, so let me start off by saying thank you so much for joining me and playing the day. And I want every bride and groom and just to know that you deserve to be taken care of. Every bride deserves to be a princess on her wedding day. Yep. And type of wedding that you have really should reflect the type of planner that you hire or a designer planner slash designer. Um, if you're having a small intimate gathering, that's like really low key and the expectations of a planner is the, the expectations are really low and you plan on doing a lot for yourself and a lot of planning for yourself, then it's okay to maybe hire someone that's new, that's just getting their feet wet. And it's okay if, if you don't feel that you're spending thousands of dollars on a planner. But if you're spending a ton of money, I'm talking a ton of money, which a lot of people are spending a lot of money these days and they're having two and three and four and 500 people, you don't want to manage that. So hiring a professional that's well versed in the industry, it can really make or break your planning experience. So I'm going to dive in. So awesome. <laughs> look for someone that is running a business, not something fun on the side. And let me say, I started out that way. This was something fun on the side. My background was in healthcare. And then after I was living two lives, I decided to choose planning. And once I started to really focus, I treated my brides differently and I was able to really focus on them and the whole process and really help them from beginning to end. And again, it's okay if they do it part time, but if you're really planning a larger wedding, get somebody who does it for their full time job and ask them what their process is. And so typically, you know, do they schedule meetings? Do they charge for emails? Do they charge for phone calls? You know, how does that process work? And then do you like their process? Because our process, I'm gonna share with you a few things that we do, we're completely paperless. And so we share our documents via Dropbox and we do templates on Google Drive and we share them with our clients. Some planners think I'm crazy, um, but I just wanna be productive. And mainly because most of our clients, they're all around the world, they're scattered. Right place and so I want them to know that their documents are safe and they're backed up and they're online and you know I've had brides walk into my office with these notebooks and they're all color-coded and they've got their guest list and all their contracts and that's great but you know what if your car's broken into and that's stolen like you want to pull your hair out right then what do you do 
Yeah. It's happened to some of our clients in the past. And so I tell these stories to tell people that it's so, so important to back up your stuff. Um, the third thing is asking them, how do you back up documents and details? How are they shared with you? Do you see all of your quotes? Or does the planner give you one big budget, you pay them one big check, and they disperse all the payments? There's different business models to different planners. There's not really one that's right or wrong, but it's important to me as a planner to just make sure that my clients know where their money is going. So you wanna know where your money's going, because it goes fast. <laughs> It goes so fast. Oh my gosh, yes, it does. And I just want to say hi, Adrian. Thanks for joining. Great having you back. So hi, Adrian. Thanks for joining. Um, <laughs> and then the fourth thing I would ask is, do they have a team or are they a one man or woman show? And if they are a one woman show or man show, and that's okay, just what's their backup plan? I am very transparent with my clients up front when they're interviewing me. I am not a one woman show. I do four things in the company and then I have an execution team. I have a communications director. So we're a team working together to pull off these large events. Right. My fifth thing is ask who will be executing your wedding. Just so you know, um, I'm not my, my client's best friends. Sometimes I'm not at every wedding that I plan and design. That's why I have a great execution team. It is not all about your planner people. It is all about the team that the planner puts together for you. So just remember that. Um, and that's a great point too, because there are teams out there that have, like for example, there are teams out there that have dev coordinators and they've got five or six people on their team. So you may be talking to maybe the owner of the company, but maybe it's one of her team members who's going to be there day off. So just right. knowing those things is probably really important. Yeah. And when, question girls, ask. when girls are like, oh, you're not going to be there. I'm like, listen, all my girls that work for me, if if I didn't trust them with my company name, I wouldn't have them out there representing me. Right. So unfortunately, you know, I'm one person and that's the reason I take interns and, and I employ a bunch of people because I want to help multiple people if their dates are booked. Absolutely. Yep. And then the next thing is number six is does your planner have to be involved in everything or will they do partial planning and guide you along the way? And so, for example, oh, my gosh, five minutes has already gone by. I set my time. <laughs> um, so, for example, like there's four things that the clients really need me for, which is their floor plan and the logistics, their budget, which I call it priorities and then doing their timeline and then putting their execution team together. And there's a lot of other things that happen behind the scenes, but someone else on my team is way better than that than me. Um, number seven is ensure that you hire someone that has your needs um, in their heart. And so I say that because some planners will take kickbacks and commissions, which there's nothing wrong with that if that's the way they're getting paid. But I would just ask that question, like how are you getting paid? Do you get referral fees? And if you do, just make sure that they're referring their vendors to you that really are in your best interest who are going to fit your style and your budget. Number eight, when interviewing a planner, listen to them and make sure that they're educating you and not trying to persuade you. That's two very different things when you're trying That's to. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, when you're trying to figure out like, yes. how much experience do you have? Because the more... Year, the more number of years I do this, the more I just want to educate these girls and I just want to take them under my wing and help them all. Um, but what I, are some good two top two questions to ask about that, you would say, to kind of get a feel for that? Yeah. So I would just say, um, you know, what type or I, I would ask them, how long have you been planning weddings? Mm -hmm. How many weddings do you plan? Which when people ask me that, I truly have no idea. But you know, when I say I do hundreds of events in a year, sometimes like that should be enough to let them know I'm pretty experienced. Right. Um, and so just ask them, like, how many do you plan? How long have you been doing it? And do you prefer to really take over everything or do you like to be more like a guide on the side? And everybody has their own their own personality and, and they'll tell you they should tell. Right. <laughs> That's great. Um, and then just to. Kind of, well, and number nine, like the down and dirty on like what we do is ask the planners if they also do design because there's a lot of like, uh, yeah, I do design, but then they don't end up doing a floor plan and they don't put together all the linens and the flowers and the lighting and the chandeliers. And that's really a designer. And 
So we do both, but that's not very typical. There's a lot of planners who do logistics and there's a lot of planners who can also do design. So make sure you understand what you're paying for. Um, that's a great point too. Yeah. Really good point because I think there's a big difference between a wedding designer and a wedding planner. Yes, very different. The plan in the brains, they're both amazing types of people, but the brains yep. are just different. So yep. a lot of planners, they'll flat out tell you, like, I don't have a creative bone in my body. They are all logistics and they're type A and they are on top of it. And then creative designers, they're kind of like all over the place and they're like, what about this? And what about this? What about this? But then the planner is thinking through all the execution pieces. So you can have great ideas, but if you don't know how to execute it or have the team to execute to execute it appropriately it could be a nightmare. Um, and that's happened yeah. to me before. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll just do it myself. Or I make sure you hire the right people. And that's right. what a plan does for you. They make sure you hire the right people. Um, and the last point before I go into pricing and value really quick is just don't expect your planner to like be your best friend. Like I think sometimes people think that I'm gonna be hanging out with them, drinking mimosas, getting my nails done on their wedding day, and it's like, no, no, no. Like I'm your ass and ears on the wedding day and I need to make sure that I'm out there making sure the vendors are all good to go, making sure if the guests have any questions and I'm there to be you, to make sure that everything happens that you want to happen behind the scenes. Okay, so now changing subjects. Um, pricing, 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 yeah. Pricing value really quick. So with pricing, the thing with pricing is you cannot compare planners with price. You just, you can't. It's like apples and apples. It's like photographers and videographers like we all have our own style and so what you're really hiring is the right person for their process for their experience their communication skills and really how much experience do they have and can they pull off what you really need and so someone in the industry that's been there for 10 plus years they're going to probably charge more and they're probably going to educate you more than someone that's been doing it for a year or two because they don't know what they don't know yet and that's okay like i was new too one time i had to start somewhere too and i started at 500 dollars. but now as you as i've increased my awareness and i've started to become a coach you know, again, like there's only so much time in the day, so you have to start building up. We actually don't do packages anymore. Um, that's very, very normal with planners. They do packages, which as an entrepreneur and a business owner, we can't be profitable that way. And so we only want people to pay for what they need and what they want because every client's different. We can follow the same strategy and the same process, but we don't want to charge you to do a seating chart if you don't need a seating chart. Right. So we we bill our clients the first of every month. And so there's some client in the very beginning of the process and the very end, they need us a lot. But in between, they're, we're more like a guide and we're there if they need us. Um, and so if we spend 10 hours on your wedding that month, you're going to get a bill on the first. And if we don't talk to you for four or five months, you're not going to get a bill. Um, so we try to keep it very simple. Some people are like, oh, that's like an attorney. I'm like, no, that's how we have to operate our business. And so I challenge you to look into the pricing and for people who are doing packages, just clarify, like, how much time does this exactly require? Because right. So equate to, like, if it's this amount of money, how many hours is that? How much right. time is that? Where are you, where are you going to be? Like, what does that include? Yeah. So make sure you know where your money is going. And then on value, um, I can't say enough. Like, if you have the right planner, your planner and the experience should be invaluable. I mean, a planner is not a luxury item anymore. It really is an investment to making your experience great. Just like your wedding. Like, come on, let's be honest. Your wedding, people, these weddings, people are doing, I mean, they're investing and in starting their life together. And like, why they wouldn't do it with planner, I don't know. That's okay. Um, but people, they'll say, you know, do planners save you money? Absolutely. They save money. They save time. They save energy. It's not so much about discounts. Like, what discounts are you going to get me? It's about the relationships that we have with all the different vendors in whatever town we're working in. And there, there's like so many requests we get. Like, Angela, can we have a peacock? Angela, can we have a horse? Angela, can we have fireworks on the top of the pinnacle building? Like, crazy stuff. And it's like if if an inexperienced planner were to like call in those favors or not even know where to go get permits for that stuff, your ideas and expectations are not going to be met because they don't know what they're doing. 
Right. A lot of the new girls, like I mentor a lot of planners and I will walk them through how to get it. And I love it when girls call me, they're like, I got my first big wedding. Oh, what to do? It's okay. Well, let's talk through it. You know, that's okay. Um, but planners can save you a ton of time. You're not going to be able to plan your whole wedding on the internet. Like you're not going to be able to do that. You can find out a lot of great information, but when it comes to execution, at least get somebody the month of to do it. Yes. And, and, and the last thing I'll say, um, is when people say, are you, do you do day of coordination? Well, in order to, for a planner, which really day of coordination is a coordinator or director, um, they really need to have a timeline and they probably need to meet you at least two or three weeks before your wedding to do a timeline in order to understand what your expectations are so that they can carry out those expectations for you. There's nothing worse than showing up on the morning of someone's wedding. You don't know them. You don't have a timeline. You don't have the vendors and something goes wrong. And who do you have to go to? The bride or her mom. And that's, that's such a sick feeling as a planner because you never want to bother a bride or her mom on their wedding day. So right. the pre-preparation is really, really important. Um, so that's it. I hope that the, that this helps. Does anybody have love it? <laughs> I know. I know Adrian's tuned in, but I don't see any questions yet. So, and one point I want to make too, is just, especially day of, you want to be with your family and your friends. You don't want to have to worry about making sure everyone gets down the aisle or is this going on time or where are we on time for this? You know, I think that was, that was really huge for me. So. Or is my cake here? And is it right? Right, right, <laughs> right. Is the, did the right one show up? I've heard horror stories about that. There's, I can count on almost two hands now how many weddings that I've done and I have a picture of the cake or I know what the cake is supposed to look like. These, again, these are not my normal vendors that I use. And I walk on <laughs> like, we don't have a Disney cake. Where did that cake come from? That's not the right Disney thing. cake. Yes, they did like deliver. It was a grocery store. They delivered the wrong cake to my, you know, they swap cakes. But it's like things like that happen. They just don't happen on TV. <laughs> I feel like we should have a plan today show around stories. Oh my gosh. Like that. My videos and my books. If anybody. That'd be fun. Great videos. Go to my YouTube. YouTube channel every Tuesday we post Tuesday tips and they're real stories <laughs> yes yes definitely check them out because I'm sure they're freaking funny too well they're funny now <laughs> right but at the time <laughs> I found it was like ah, freaking out <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, well, thank you so much for coming on the show it's always so lovely to see you and talk to you and um these are just so helpful so I appreciate yeah. you well, good luck planning, everybody that tuned in. And thank you, Christina, yes. and thank you for playing the day for having me on. I look forward yes. to the next. Yes, we'll have you back on definitely. Thanks again, Brides, for tuning in. As always, share it if you love it, you love where you're hearing, you find this helpful for your girlfriends, share away. And we'll be back on in about two weeks. So um, stay tuned on our social media to find out on the next upcoming show. And see you next time.